Hi, bud. Hi, Skip. Hi, bud. Hi, Skip. Bud, can I ask you a question? Sure. Well. Oh, I don't believe this. What's the matter? Skip, I don't think it's a real good time for that right now. What do you mean? Hello everyone, today's video is not just a review, it is an intervention, so let me say this to you right now, you do not need to buy the Ninja Turtles Cowabunga collection. Save your $40, put it back in your wallet, give it to a homeless man, spend it on grade A crystal if you have to. Yeah, bitch! You do not need to buy these games once again, especially in the state they are being presented here. Doing these reviews, being part of this YouTubing hype culture environment, nostalgia is king. It just feels inevitable. The pretense of criticism doesn't even exist anymore. You watch reviews for this collection, it's just advertising at this point. The pretense doesn't even exist. No one gives a sh**. And in past reviews of these types of collections, especially with nostalgia properties, I've tried the more diplomatic approach. I've tried saying, well, you know, the original release had two frames of input lag, but this collection has six frames of input lag, so that is a tripling of the amount of input lag. Also, the original games are not exactly rare. You can get them almost anywhere, but all of that falls on deaf ears. Just before recording this video, I had a comment on one of my previous reviews of a collection, and the guy said to me, eight frames of input lag, I don't care if it's 8 frames, I can't tell the difference, and honestly, it's annoying that you're bringing it up. How do you even reason with that sort of attitude, other than saying, okay buddy, get off the ketamine, I don't know what you're even talking about, something is medically wrong with you if you can't tell there are 8 frames of input lag, or you've spent your entire life buying laggy collections that you have forgotten what responsive gameplay even feels like. So today's review is going to be maybe a little bit more on the ranty side, but I'm just trying different approaches here. Hopefully this gets through to a few people. If not, the comment section will be extra spicy, I am sure. So before we talk about this collection, I actually want to bring up something that no one seems to talk about anymore. It's just gone from the conversation, which is five years ago on gaming YouTube, there was this massive movement with people like My Life in Gaming, where it was all about playing on the original consoles, original console only, emulation is garbage, cycle accurate emulation even, who gives a shit, that's not the real deal, the real deal is playing on the original consoles. And at the time I thought, uh, that's a little bit short sighted, but I did respect the attitude because at least they were sticking by some kind of coherent principle here, and normally with at least the original console versions, they played well because in the past developers had to pay attention to that sort of thing but these days crickets does anyone bring this up anymore whenever these mammoth collections come out does this group of people exist they don't seem to you don't hear this anymore this attitude of okay we don't need to buy the same games 25 times it seems like okay we've sold our mod chips we've sold our rgb cables we've covered the topics let it go baby and now we're all talking about how great these collections are and how wonderful it is that now you can get them in the palm of your hand on the Nintendo Switch or whatever. So let's talk about the Kawabunga collection. My first point is I could not have been any less enthused for this collection because it seems like one of the most unnecessary collections ever assembled. All of these games, especially the main ones that people care about, Turtles in Time, Hyperstone Heist, 
and maybe Turtles in Time Arcade, maybe, those games, you've had access to them in how many ways over all of these years, and it's not exactly an obscure platform. Everyone has a freaking Super Nintendo, everyone has their Genesis, everyone has them RGB modded. That sector of retro gaming has already been covered. And so why do you need to spend $40 to buy these games once again? That question doesn't seem to ever be asked. It really does seem to be now that it is just accepted that every game that has ever come out, we're just going to keep re-releasing them over and over and over again. And no one is going to say anything about it. And not only that, but the standards for the re-releases get lower and lower and lower. All these supposed extras of these collections have been available in unofficial emulation forever. Forever. But it seems like now that some of these are getting implemented in a rudimentary fashion, it's like a big deal. You've been able to rewind in old school emulators forever. You've been able to do massive piles of save states forever. You could access dip switches for the arcade games for a very long time. None of these things are groundbreaking or new or something that, unless you just have been living under a rock, are worth the time and money, at least in my opinion. And overall, the real strategy here seems to be volume. So we're just going to throw everything at you, and that's going to make up the $40 price tag. So we're going to throw in box scans. We're going to throw in game manuals. Game manuals used to be free. Now they're a feature box scans, game manuals, random doodles that are supposed to be these deep development documents. When you read development documents, they act like it's the source code of the game. It's like a doodle of a map. <laughs> it's like, okay, they're definitely worth the money. People are just happy with scraps, it seems like to me. The 40 bucks, I mean, 40 bucks is a lot of money. So then let's go through the games and the input lag because that's really the breaker. I fired up the game and I thought, okay, well, it's lame or whatever, but if at least it plays well, you know, I'll forgive it. But it plays like hell on earth. So the first game I went to and tried out, of course, was Turtles in Time Super Nintendo, the best game in the collection by far, bar none. Let us not pretend that the arcade version of Turtles in Time is remotely close to the SNES version. And I am an arcade aficionado, so this isn't just some Super Nintendo fanboy. I love arcade games. But the arcade version of Turtles in Time is awful. Konami did not understand the concept of hit stun at the time. So you go in and play the game, it's like a prototype. You, you're swinging around a wet noodle the entire time. The hit stun system is awkward and janky. The attacks are janky. The movement is janky. And then you throw on six frames of input lag. Let me repeat that six frames of input lag. It feels like a hot garbage mess. And then you try Turtles in Time Super Nintendo. You go in there. It's just the Super Nintendo version, by the way. I was excited for 0.5 seconds because at the main menu, there's this enhancements button. And for years, I've been really wanting a ROM hack of the Super Nintendo version of Turtles in Time that ups the difficulty and adds more enemies because the biggest flaw of Turtles in Time on Super Nintendo is the low difficulty. It is just too easy. Even playing on hard mode, it is just too easy. It's very fun, one of my favorite beat-em-ups, but it's just too easy. So I saw that enhancements, and for a second I was like, oh my god, are they going to actually do something? Are they going to make this port have some sort of value? They're going to do something with the game. They're going to add in a mode, or they're going to have like Caravan, or they're going to have higher difficulties, or they're going to do something. You go into enhancements, stage select nice <laughs> it's like okay and then it has the dash button and you're like all right give me the dash bus button but what's funny is if you turn on the dash button and then you go into the rom of the game essentially and you go into the options menu you can turn on manual dash which i always do which you should do that's a correct way to play the game you go on and turn on manual dash and that seems to nullify the dash button so was the net dash button literally just manual dash I'm assuming it was, or if not, they don't seem to get along well because it doesn't work anymore. You also can't remap the dash button, which I find very silly. So if you're playing on arcade stick, it's like in this really awkward position that you always confuse with the menu. So you go to dash and you're hitting the menu button. You're like, mother. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the button remapping is absolutely stupid. So you go in, you play Turtles in Time. 
Okay, you get a nice little stage select. And for a moment there, it's like, oh, save state, load state. You get one slot, baby. And then the rewind feature. Much has been made of the rewind feature. And like I've said, they've been around in emulators for years. I have yet to meet anyone who's all jazzed about emulation rewind because in most arcade games, especially beat-em-ups and shmups and tactical types of games, you can't just rewind out of a bad decision because literally you made the bad decision 10 seconds ago and then it takes 10 seconds for the level design to overwhelm you. So the rewind feature in a lot of these games is like, are getting pummeled, you rewind, try and fight your way out, rewind, try and fight your way out, when really you should just save state and properly route rather than just trying to undo these bad routing options. So to me, I don't think the rewind feature is all that great. And I sort of suspect that it adds input lag. That is my suspicion because every collection that comes out now with the damn rewind feature, every single one is really laggy. That's just a theory, but it seems to be a thing. Maybe they have some sort of buffer thing going and that is what causes the input lag. I don't know, but it's a lot of input lag. Again, Turtles in Time Super Nintendo, six frames. Let's stack this up to the original release. So I popped out the Super Nintendo version and I popped up the Mr. version just for people who say, okay, yeah, I know we did this whole thing where we're all supposed to have RGB modded Super Nintendos and flash carts, but you know, getting up and plugging that in is just a pain in the ass. So it just sits on my shelf. And really, I just want to play everything on my PS4 and my Switch and my Xbox anyway. So I was like, okay, let me test the Mr. version. This is a version that people are gravitating towards. So the Mr. version, two frames of input lag. You play it on RetroArch, one frame of input lag. You play it on RetroArch on the Switch, which is laggier than on the PC, three frames of input lag. So an unofficial emulation of this game on the very same platform is better in every way. More save state features, more emulation features overall. It's just, you know, what what is that? What you know, what is the big exciting deal with these collections? I don't understand. Those are the two main ones. And then we go to Hyperstone Heist. Again, I was like, okay, this one's kind of a heavy hitter. And I was watching some of their views and people were talking about Hyperstone Heist and they don't seem to understand the appeal of it. Let me explain. Hyperstone Heist is inferior as far as combat and mechanics to Turtles in Time on Super Nintendo. It just is. The hit stun is funkier. The throw system is funkier. It just isn't as tight on the mechanics. But its big redeeming feature is that it is fairly like Turtles in Time on the Super Nintendo. It's much better than the wet noodle combat of the arcade version. But its saving grace is that it is much more difficult than Turtles in Time on the Super Nintendo. And so that's what makes it a compelling release is the difficulty is actually somewhat of a challenge. And so there, you know, there's more longevity in that regard. Even though I still like Super Nintendo version better, I do like Hyperstone Heist for the added difficulty. So Hyperstone Heist, six frames. Again, on the Genesis, the Genesis is a responsive creature. I haven't lag tested a Genesis, but emulation of the Genesis has been rock solid forever. Ever since like the Xbox, the original Xbox, you were getting rock solid Genesis emulation on that thing. Six frames of input lag, that is a lot of lag. Again, no extra features, nothing really making it worth your while. And then we go to, oh boy, the rest of the collection. So my opinion, those are the two heavy hitters. Those are the reason people are buying this collection. Very few people are getting up in the middle of the night sweating thinking, oh my god. God, I have to play the Nintendo version of the Turtles game. It needs to happen. Or better yet, I must play Tournament Fighters. It must happen. It is absolutely necessary. I've had that game for years. I think I've played it three times, especially in collections. Like, it's one thing if they release Tournament Fighters in some sort of fighting game collection where you could hopefully get an install base of people who are willing to at least play with you a little bit but a solo sort of single player collection that includes fighting games in it i think that's a no-go no one's going to be playing that with you you're not going to get much out of them other than just some local play here or there you know it, they're just very limited options so yeah there's the fighting game ones tournament fighters is the best of them i don't think anyone's really writing home about those and then there's the other arcade game turtle turtles arcade like turtles in time arcade i think this game is big pile of crap basically 
Now, I love beat-em-ups. I love old-school beat-em-ups. But this was when Konami did not understand how to make a beat-em-up. They didn't understand really how to do it. They figured it out later on with Turtles in Time and Batman Returns. But at this era, their beat-em-ups were horrible. They have, like I said, wet noodle hit stun. It just feels mushy and awful. And the game just forces you to spam attacks and stuff. The throw system is a complete joke. It's just poorly made game. So other than like the memes or whatever, I just don't think the game is worth your time all that much especially in such a pricey collection it's just i think padding along with a lot of other games then you got the turtles nintendo games again i actually bought these as a kid so i was the kid who bought turtles in time thought it was the most amazing game ever and thought okay well there's other turtles games on the regular nintendo i'll get those boy did i feel ripped off i think these games are just awful i wouldn't recommend playing them what what why do you need them padding out your completionist library, but as far as how many people are going to be sinking hours into these games, I don't think many. We have the Game Boy games, and I do have a soft spot for one of them. So the first Game Boy game I think is kind of poopy. The second Game Boy game though, that one is hot stuff, and probably I would say the one hidden gem of this collection, Back from the Sewers. And the reason why is it kind of plays like this crazy ghouls and ghosts meets Castlevania game. It plays absolutely nothing like a beat-em-up, but it is hard as hell, but surprisingly well designed in kind of a ghosts and goblins sort of way, where it's just visceral and nasty and it beats you down and makes you cry. As a kid, I had this bad boy on the Game Boy. I have played this game, no kidding, hundreds of hours growing up. I could never beat it in one CC, one clear it. It is a mean son of a bitch. But it has some crazy, impressive mechanics for a Game Boy game. For example, you have the sex kick that only Samus could compete with. And the damn thing just hangs out forever. And also the jump mechanics are surprisingly well developed because you have this ridiculous arc which barely moves forward, but it's very, very controllable. So you can do these little short hop kicks like Super Smash Brothers. Then you can do these giant full hops over things. So the jumping system, the level design, it's it's fun. It's crazy. It's fun. It's kind of crappy, but it's also pretty sweet. But this collection, would I recommend playing it on this collection? Absolutely not. Five frames of input lag on a Game Boy game. What is happening under the hood that your Game Boy game requires five frames of input lag? And so again, because the game is actually surprisingly technical, lag is going to drive you absolutely up the wall so if you i do recommend this game but not in this collection play it on a mister play it on a game boy play it on a super game boy play it however you need to play it on a retro arch not on this collection five frames is way too much ruins it also they've thrown all these dumbass features at you like oh these are player tips oh box art scans look all screenshots of different cartoon shows right but then they don't bring in features that I thought would be cool. Like, for example, whenever I play this game on the Super Game Boy, I like to colorize it, right? And most emulators will do this as well. You can colorize it. So rather than playing it in pure black and white, you can change the colors. What I used to do as a kid, I was act I'd actually match up the color palettes to the turtle. So if I was playing Ralph, I call him Ralph and it drives people crazy. So Raphael, I used red. If I played Leonardo, I used blue, purple, orange you get the point so that was cool right but you can't do that in this collection there's no sort of color palette options so overall what are my conclusions with this collection i would say skip it boys you know save your money spend it on something else buy something else buy a game that you haven't played before how about that rather than buying the same games 27 times why don't you buy a new game a game that you have not played before how about that <laughs> rather than rebuying the same collections over and over again especially with the input lag right like i said if digital eclipse delivered with the performance i'd be unenthused but i wouldn't be as harsh because at least they're bringing the goods they have done some decent ports in the past i believe like the uh third strike port i like that but again the way the meta is evolving this whole idea of Let's take a game that people like, Turtles in Time, Super Nintendo, and really do a good job on this port. 
make it responsive, add in extras, add in features that people are looking for rather than rewind in one save state slot, like real features, the survival modes, anything, something, boss rush, anything. No, we're not going to do that. That, you know, that's antiquated. That's not, that's not what moves the packages. People want volume. People want to buy a shitload of stuff that they will never play, that they'll put on their shelf, but it feels good. You feel like you're getting a deal. It's like when you go to a yard sale and you just, you're just buying shit because it's cheap. And then you go home and you're like, I just bought a hundred dollars worth of garbage. I'm looking in the back of my truck. I bought hundred dollars worth of stuff. I'm going to actually have to throw away in the next week. Right? I think that's honestly how a lot of these can, the mentality, a lot of these collections work because let's talk about it. Uh, what about those other collections you all love so much? Are you all firing those up right now? Are you firing up your Psycho collection as we speak? You're just, you know, you can't get enough of it. The input lag, you can't feel it. It doesn't bother you. So since that game came out, just every weekend, you're firing up that Psycho collection, playing it. Are you? <laughs> I'd be surprised. I think they're a one-time impulse buy. Then you stick them on your shelf and wow, don't they look nice? Especially with all the collectibles they come with and the, oh, the manuals. The scans, so cool, so nifty. The screenshots of the cartoon that you can't actually watch. Random replays of very low quality gameplay. We all need that, right? So anyway, I've ranted on enough. I hope you've all enjoyed this. I am sure I've pissed the internet off at this point, but I think this is becoming warfare now. Mark against the world as far as these stupid collection reviews. Adios, everyone. So thank you to the $5 patrons, 100, 100, another Joe, Anthony A, Aaron Solis, Bo, Ben, Blur Reality, Borgie 22, Brian Shiver, Chris Yusufovich, Chronic Burnout 3, Climbing Coyote, Cook Some Soup, Corey Mark, Des Audio, Darren Griffin, Disco Stas Slayer, DJ420, Praise It, Eric H, FCK, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, How Su, J, Magellan6276, JLab, JBRPG, John Kelly, Game Boy Guru, K, K2, KZ, Khalil Reedy, Contain, Larage, Malaise, Mark Toms, Matthew Derekish, Maz, Megadeth859, Minung, Mechelin, Michael Stum, Mitchell Y, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Neon Dagger Games, Oakla Kugels, Psycho Blizzard, Rattlecat, Raul, Real Skeen, Riff Mason, Rolf015, Sarah, Scanline City, CSOFW, 7 Overdose, Shmup Junkie, Sarah Pong, Steve Fiction, The Boot Rex, The Dirty Screech, The N1, TRM, Sugumo, Twilight EX, Unicoi Roots, Wabby Legs, and Utakaya. Thanks for watching.